This is a Volkswagen Tiguan. I know it's a Volkswagen Tiguan, I can hear you cry. It looks like one, that's how I know it's a Tiguan. But this is a Tiguan with a difference. What kind of difference? This is different. In fact, the whole car is different. It's longer. Why is it longer? Because it's the all space. It has two extra seats in the back, more room all the way through, and a few little bits and pieces to keep you interested. Before we get going on the Tiguan All Space, can I ask you if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell button. That way, whenever we put a new video on the channel, you will hear about it straight away. We're gonna cover all the things we normally cover in this video. We're gonna talk about how much it costs, what is it, what's it like inside, what do you get for your money, what's it cost to service, what's it like to drive. I'm gonna chop it up into YouTube chapter markers so it's all easy for you to find the bits you want. And of course, get in the comments, tell me what you think. Is the All Space worth a bit extra for all that extra space? All right, let's get cracking. So what is a Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace? Well, it is still a five seat SUV. It's just a bit bigger. So it has seven seats and we'll show you that seven seats in a minute. What's new for 2022? Well, you get these new matrix LED lights, which Volkswagen calls IQ light. You also get in all but the entry level, this awesome full width LED light bar that is working its way through the Volkswagen range and it looks really cool. The car you're looking at here is the R line. So it gets a little bit more aggro in the bumper, the big wheels, of course, and a bit of chrome and a lot more stuff inside. If you start with the 110, you get front wheel drive, it's very basic looking. I think it actually looks pretty good with the unpainted cladding, that kind of thing. There's some great colors. You have a choice of six in the non R lines. And of course, one of those colors is the gorgeous new King's Red. And in the R line, you do lose that King's Red, but it looks pretty much the same as it did just with this very mild facelift. The updated Tiguan Allspace range now has six distinct versions, starting with the front-wheel drive 110 TSI Life for $45,590. Next up is the 132 TSI Life with more power and all-wheel drive for $48,950. Moving on to the Elegance, you can have the 162 TSI Petrol with more power again for $56,990 and the 147 TDI with the Torquey Turbo Diesel for $61,190. The R-Line is now its own spec rather than a pack and now costs 58,490 for the 162 TSI and 61,690 for the 147 TDI. Later in the year will be the five seat Tiguan All Space Adventure. Keep an eye out for that one. Boot space starts at 230 litres with all the seats in use, which is about the same as a small hatchback like a Toyota Yaris or a Mazda 2. With the third row out of the way, you have a whopping 700 litres and with the middle row all folded down, 1775 litres. You can also get more legroom at the expense of cargo space by sliding the middle row back or forward. Here in the back seat, as you can probably see, quite a bit of room. I've got lots of foot space, lots of knee room. I'm sitting behind where I drive. I'm 180 centimetres tall. Okay, just slightly under. Stop getting into me about that. Uh, and it's really, really comfortable. What I like about the back seat of the Tiguan is you've got these little, little pockets to put your phone in. Map pockets, of course, big bottle holders in the doors, and we've got an armrest with decent sized cup holders. Another one of the things I go on about is rear air vents, and this has them, so that's really good. And not only that, here in the upper reaches of the 162 R line, you get your own climate control zone and you get heated seats. How cool is that? The outboard seats, of course. Uh, and to charge your devices, there's one USB-C port and one 12 volt. Theoretically, you could get three across the back here, but the transmission tunnel is reasonably hefty. So if the person that's gonna sit in the middle is reasonably short, you should be okay. Tons of headroom too. I could probably fit a coffee cup on my head and for regular viewers, you'll know what that means. For new viewers, hello, that seems weird. Um, but really, really comfortable. I really like the back seat of the Tiguan. I've had a couple of people get upset at me about what I think about the back seat, but it is actually really, really comfortable. The only thing I could ask for is maybe slightly more support under the legs, but that's it. It's very, very comfortable. Just like the back seat, the front seat is really comfortable. Again, we're in the 162 R line here, so we do have the better seats and the funky leather trim and all that kind of thing. But having driven the 110 Life, actually really comfortable. I quite like the cloth seats in that. They're comfortable, they're supportive, and that is a theme all the way through the range. Of course, being Volkswagen, 
the steering wheel has a flat bottom. They couldn't help themselves, but I guess that's okay. Now, one of the things I didn't realize when I drove the Tiguan R-Line a few weeks ago, it's probably months ago now, these capacitive buttons, the way I hold the wheel, which is apparently a bit wonky, according to some of you, I was turning the steering wheel heating on, which this car also has. But one upside of that is, you know how when you're driving along and you've got that lane departure warning kind of thing where it thinks you've taken your hands off the wheel? Just a little brush of that and it goes, oh, your hands are on the wheel, that's fine. So that's just a little tip I learned today. You do get a digital dashboard across the range. You also get a touch screen across the range, either an eight inch Discover or a 9.2 inch Discover Pro. Wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and wireless charging standard across the range. That's really cool. So you know that whether you're down in the mid 45s in a 110, you're getting that same connectivity, which is really, really handy. Again, heaps of headroom, uh, lots of adjustment in the seat, and again, in the upper reaches, you get electric seats with the memory function. Look, it's just, it's a really good cockpit. It's beautifully laid out, beautifully thought out, Everything feels good. Yes, there's plenty of plastic in here and some of the plastics on the door cards are a bit meh, but when you've got the Harman Kardon stereo cranked up, you don't care. Uh, that's an option, by the way. So just a really nice cabin, very similar to the Tiguan R I drove a little while ago, but I would say slightly more comfortable. But the real test is the third row. Now, obviously it's not meant for people my size, but it's worth testing out just to show you how much space there is. So nice big door, check, we like that. How do you get in the back? Well. The middle row does slide backwards and forwards, which is really handy. I always say it so you get closer to the kids so you can hit them. Um, apparently that's not the right thing to say, but there we are. That's an old joke and I'm gonna keep using it. You pull this tab to move the seat down like that. And you can push it forward like that. So that's good. And then that means you can climb in. Now again, for a six footer, not great. But, <laughs> look, it's snug. And there's no way I could sit back here with these seats in the rearmost position. However, with a bit of negotiation, a bit of fiddling around, you can get in here. And I think if you could get the seats far enough forward and the people in front could fit, this would be okay for a very short journey. Smaller kids will probably be okay, but it is a bit dark and um, the windows are probably a bit high for the shorter kids. But hey, let's call it even and call it a five plus two. The Tiguan Allspace has all the usual safety spec, like ABS, stability and traction controls, airbags. They go all the way to the third row in the seven-seater versions. There is a five-seater version, the Adventure. Doesn't have it all the way back to the boot, but boot things don't need that. It's also got my favorite thing, reverse cross-traffic alert. Every car should have that, and I'm going to stick with that till the day I die. It also has Ford AB with pedestrian detection. Now, the 2016 spec ANCAP 5 star safety award obviously stands, however, things have changed since then. There's more safety stuff on the car, but also the 5 star rating is much harder to get. So whether it would pass today without a centre front airbag, I don't know, but the 5 star safety rating is a bit old. Just a quick update on the safety gear. The first 4,000 updated Tiguans have side assist and reverse cross traffic alert, but cars made after this batch won't until at least the end of 2022. There are more details about that in my written review, link in the description. There are several engines in the range, so let's go for a quick whistle stop tour. The Life has a choice of 110 kilowatts in the 1.4 litre front wheel drive or 132 kilowatts in the 132 TSI all wheel drive, which also has a seven speed DSG rather than the six speed in the 110. The 162 TSI is an upgraded version of the 132 TSI two litre turbo with 162 kilowatts and 350 newton meters. This is by far the most popular engine in the Tiguan ranges and is available in the Elegance and R-Line specs as well as the forthcoming adventure. And finally, the 147 TDI turbo diesel has 147 kilowatts and 400 newton meters and is also available in the Elegance and R-Line. Volkswagen offers a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is pretty much the pace, except BMW on three years and Kia on seven, and of course Mitsubishi way out ahead with 10. You can prepay your servicing for three or five years. On a 110, you'll pay 1,400 for three years and 2,650 for five years. And if you want the 162s or any of the other ones, you'll pay around 1,650 for three years and 2,950 for five. They offer substantial savings if you prepay, so that would be the way to go. 
it's a very pleasant car to drive. So I drove a 162 TSI R-Line in the standard some months ago, and I really liked it. And it's so smooth, so quiet. It's a lovely engine, pretty much in any spec you care to drive it in, even in the lower power ones. But as you've moved up to the 162, the turbo lag seems to drop away a bit, and it makes it a smoother drive with the seven-speed transmission. The seven-speed transmission, look, it's very good. It's, it's just gotten better and better over the years. And the ride in all of the cars is pretty good. The better ride is obviously on the smaller wheels. But up here at the upper end, you've got adaptive damping, which can help smooth out things in comfort. It really does smooth things out, and on the freeway. It's quiet, it's comfortable. The Tiguan is such a great car. The all space just adds that little bit of extra comfort, a lot of extra space. So whether it's needing those rear uh, two seats for occasional use, you know, cause you're taking the soccer team out uh, to play or whatever it is, or you want that massive boot. Oh, it's got a huge boot. It's like the size of a Tesla Model Y boot almost. And that's without the big bucket under the floor. The additional practicality of it, if you are carrying a lot of stuff around, is really, really handy. And I think even some small business people will appreciate that. But the bottom line about this car is, it's extremely comfortable. Dynamically, it's really nice to drive. So if you care about how a car drives, this drives really, really nicely and, and is going to be better in an all wheel drive version. The front wheel drive version's perfectly fine around town, but even in the 110, I got a little bit of torque steer. So there's obviously plenty of torque there, uh, but you, you're getting none of that in the all wheel drive. It's a very comfortable drive. And as far as midsize SUVs go, having that CX-8 style third row, for some families, that's gonna be really, really handy. Not everyone, not everyone needs that extra space, but for a few grand more, you're getting you know a good extra chunk of space without going to that much bigger form factor of something like a Sorento or a Santa Fe or a Kluger uh, and the, all the expense that comes with that. And of course, if you want petrol in Santa Fe and Kluger, you're stuck with that. Well, it's pretty old. Stuck with that V6 engine, which is only front wheel drive and does suck a lot of juice. These are quite economical in the two litre four cylinders. So I came into this car expecting it to be good. Uh, I have never driven the Allspace before, uh, but there are other cars in the Volkswagen Group Empire that uh, are this kind of size. With those expectations, it has actually slightly exceeded them. And with all the extra little bits and pieces that come with the Allspace, uh, even with the irritation of dropping spec as a result of the, um, the chip shortage, it's still a pretty good package, and Volkswagen have been very upfront about what's missing, uh, and more details about that again in my written review. So yeah, everything you'd expect from the Tiguan, uh, just with a little bit more space. Standing on its own, the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace is a really good car. I mean, it was always gonna be good. The base Tiguan's terrific, the top Tiguan's terrific, a bigger one was just gonna add to the fun. It's got more space, it's got those plus two seats if you ever find yourself short seated. Yes, the price rises are a little bit hefty for 2022, but in the broader scheme of things, they're pretty standard. There's a bit more to come from this car once the microchip shorty shakes itself out, but you know, for a car that's been around for a while, this is really, really good. I can't see why you'd need that big seven seat SUV in the city, so this is that nice smaller footprint, just what you need when you need it. The only thing is, which one do you pick? Because like Mazda, there are so many to pick from.